Yo viewers, this is Rimakuro here and today I have a CCXR review for you. And... Uh, yeah. A lot of trolls. So, what to start with? Well, the one thing that pops out already into my mind is the engine sound. Which is of course the same as it is in the CCX, which means it's shit. It isn't how it's supposed to sound. And it's the same Ford V8 recycled thing we've got to listen to in a lot of cars. Of course, normally it wouldn't be such a big deal if it would be a proper sound and it would be only on a few cars, but right now it's on so many cars and it's really shitty and it's damn annoying. It's too damn annoying. Like those trolls. So, since we have that settled, let's move on to more interesting subjects like the performance, for example. And I shall start with the start, which isn't the best part of the CCX art, if I'm to be honest. I found that the same problem was with the CCX, meaning you had a good start, but it burned out a bit and you lost some speed at the start and you were a bit behind everyone else, like with the GT3 RS, the RTRX, and now the Cinquecento or F1 and so on. For CCX that was a problem when racing against a Cinquecento or F1, since its acceleration was weaker than the CCX R's and a lot weaker than Cinquecento's, meaning you couldn't catch up. But with the CCX R, which has a great acceleration at high speeds, you don't really feel that you left behind, you just okay. I'm a bit behind. Let's make it this more fun, and I'll catch you up at the first corner. And that's how it is with this car. As long as you keep to those high speed tracks and the ground go below 200 km per hour, 120 miles per hour in Imperial units, then you will thrash everything aside from the F1, which is the um, is king right now, but anything then F1 you will thrash on high speed trucks with this car. The high speeds are like, I don't know, heritage highs, campus interchange, those trucks. You will destroy everything and everything and everything. As long as you don't go in to fight with F1. But to be honest, most F1 drivers are a bit of a, well, bitches, knobs, call them what you want, but the point is they're not the best drivers around. Just goes to prove that the people that buy the most speed boosts are kids that can't drive. So overall the acceleration can be beaten only in a straight fight by the F1, Cinquecento and the Nismo Z2. So moving on, we have, and yes we have, a very good point to make because the CCXR looks amazing. It's a jaw-breaking, earth-shaking, hard making car one of the best looking cars in the game right now and of course I know it's a matter of opinion but still I prefer this and the Zonda that makes you blind because of its ugliness again it's just my opinion you may not agree at all with me that's your choice I don't want to be blind you want to be blind okay that's fine with me so let's move on to the handling of it it's a damn agile car especially on high speeds. On lower speeds, the turning point of it is not the best you could get. So, so like I said, it's meant mostly for high speed tracks. But still, believe me, it really is amazing in the corners. It's where it shines the most. It doesn't understeer, it can kick its ass, but damn, it's fun to drive. But there's one point here I have to make. It's a damn hard car to master. To master it completely and to always be able to drive with it properly, it's a damn hard job. This car has a tendency to occasionally try to kill you while you normally driving or trying to make a best time and so on, etc. And this it can be a big problem to people that can't drive really well or 
are just casually driving on. It can kill you and it's... You sometimes can laugh it off and sometimes it's a bit annoying. Especially when you're driving for the times. But one thing to say about this, in real life CCX and the CCXR, they actually want to kill you. They're just a mad wild cars. They, well, just imagine over 800 brake horsepower, rear wheel drive, and a rather small spoiler for how aerodynamic this car is, which is aerodynamic efficiency is that of a fish, meaning it's not much downforce. So all that power, rear wheel drive, not a lot of downforce, meaning it kicks its ass a lot. And it's really hard to control it. Which was proven by a stick from the top gear when they tested the CCX and he tried to do a better lap time than what he normally did. He overdid it a bit and it, well, this car was the closest to kill the stick. Since this is a game, and this that spoiler doesn't really do much. Aside from lowering the top speed, it can and it will try to kill it the same way it almost killed the stick. So better watch out. So overall handling wise, it's very good on high speeds. It doesn't understeer at high speeds. It's not the best on low speeds, but it's damn hard car to master and it occasionally likes to kill you. But it's a good car for taking down people that don't expect it. So, is the CCXR worth it? In a word, yes. It is the CCX that most owners of it waited for. It's better at everything than the CCX stock. It looks better. It sounds the same. However, now it's at the same level of the Cinquecento, meaning you can kick its ass. Especially since the Cinquecento and last buff was about more for low speed tracks and CCXR is meant for high speed tracks. So on tracks like Campus Interchange or Heritage Heights, you can say goodbye to all the Zondas and everything else besides the F1. Of course it has the Cosmic Nitro so the power up knobs can be a bit of a problem when using this. But like I said, it's hard to master so they put Nitro and the chance of them killing themselves is a lot higher. Price 7900 speed boost. That's all for me. See ya.